Greetings, loyal subjects. It is I, your king. I hope you all get lost with me in a maze, because we've got two today. Both were typings, both from the same year, just about, for legal reasons. Both are quite different, but one is from Italy, one's from Britain. We're going to look at both of them, and then we're going to compare the two. Which is best? So, let's not mess about, but let's leap into the maze together, and hope we don't get eaten by a minotaur. We're going to load Trilab. I found Trilab in MC Microcomputer 28 on page 111. This is the March 1984 edition. It was written by Marco Iori from Rome and it fits into the 16K spectrum. The idea is to give you a full screen labyrinth and you need to find your way out as quick as you can. Once it loads, we'll get full instructions, but it loads surprisingly quickly. And it's fully documented in the magazine. So not only do you get the source and some screenshots, you get a detailed breakdown of how it all works, which is actually really useful, especially if you're trying to learn coding. So, stop the tape, as we say in Italy, abandon all hope you who enter. Of course, you recognise this from Dante's Inferno. So, to move, you use the cursor key. Press key 7 to go forward, key 8 to turn right, key 5 to turn left, and key 6 to go back to front. Reverse yourself. If you get lost, you can use the compass by pressing Cap Shift B, which tells you the direction of the exit. Or you can use the plan of the labyrinth with Cap Shift P. Using the compass will cost you 10 seconds, and the map will cost you 2 minutes. Copyright Marco Yuri 1984. So, there is the map of the labyrinth, black and yellow, and we have a real lifetime starter. Real time. I'm currently facing a wall, so we turn, and I can see straight ahead there's a wall and then there's a corner. So, I use the compass and find the exit is to my right, so let's go forward a couple of spaces. Let's now turn right. And you can see there's another corner ahead of us. Go forward, then go left. And there's another corner, it's very windy windy. That's just a wall, and here we have a slightly longer corridor, not much view so far. Let's turn right. A longer corridor ending in a T-junction. So it draws the full screen pretty quickly. And then we can look. Oh, I've walked into a wall and I've hurt the wall, poor wall. And currently that's currently taking this um, a minute, so a cut edit now. Let's look at the map where we are. Okay, so we started at the dollar. Where we've been is the asterisk, and on the left-hand side you can see the hash marks. That's where we're heading, and that's cost us two minutes of time. So try and remember, memorise the map as best you can, and then move forwards. So we need to go forward and left a bit. So although it has to redraw the screen every time, uh, it's all written in basic, but it draws it fairly quickly and it's just a few lines and you get a quite clear picture of what's going on. You can't see directly to your right, or you can see there's a wall in front of you. But here you can see, yeah, there's a corridor at the end, wall at the end, move forwards, there's the wall, let's turn right into another T-junction. Then left, forwards, and then let's turn right. And let's look at the map again. I'm not quite sure. Ah, I've got myself slightly confused. So I need to go back on myself, around the corner, and then at, at the end, turn, turn left at the T-junction. So let's just turn right. There we are. Go forward once. Turn right. It's a good test of memory. It's currently taken eight minutes. Go to the end. There should be a short corridor to our right. Go forward three spaces. Then turn right. And there should be a long corridor ahead of us. Bosh, 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 bosh. Just like in The Shining. So, go to the end. Go to the end. The best part I remember of the adventure game on the BBC 
there's the vortex, obviously. But I remember, I love the computer game, which is very similar to this, but you also have to solve puzzles. And there's also a, there's a fish, which, is a, which was like red herrings. I can't go that way. Um, I can't go that way. Have I got myself mistaken? Ah, I've obviously edited this, and I've got myself lost. I didn't spot the edit. So move forwards now. Turn right. And then we go left. So all the corridors look alike. There's no decoration on the walls. There's no, they're not different colours. So you have no real sense of how well you're doing, apart from trying to remember on the map. So now I need to go forward, right, right, left, and then right, and I should be nearly there. 16k, people. 16k. I'll go right. And then forward. I think it's was it second left or first left. This is where the timer gets tricky. Oh, let's get to the end. We're nearly there. Go forward. Go forward. Turn right. Go forward. Turn left. Go forward. Turn right. And at the end, you see the exit. Is a thing of beauty. Or as they say in Italy, l'uscita. Glorious. So the maze is it's exactly the same every single time, but you start in different places in the maze. Found the maze, found the exit in 1625. Would you like another go? Yes, please. S for yes. Here I've cut it because I tried an experiment. There's a way of solving all mazes by running your left hand against the wall at all times. So you do that and you'll eventually solve all mazes. It's very boring to watch. Halfway through, I lost hope and looked at the map to make sure I actually was doing fine. You just, you, you, go, you t it just takes a very long time to get around the maze. So this time I'm getting close to the exit. And there's the exit. I've done it in 14. When I get to the exit, you'll see the route I took, which is much more... much lengthier than it perhaps could have been. As you can see here, I've done lots and lots of wandering about. So it's very pretty, very colourful, lots of sound. Lovely. This is 3D Maze from Tim Hartnell's giant book of Spectrum games. You have to find your way around a maze searching for the precious lodestar. Throughout the game, you can see the view ahead. You are told which doors open ahead, to the left and the right. As well, you are able to read the output of the load star indicator. If you're lost, you can press H for help, which will cost give you a map of the maze. The load star can be one of a number of positions, and the maze changes to some extent from game to game. You move through the maze by using the 5, 6, 7 and 8 arrows, moving in the direction indicated by the arrows. So... This is published in 1984. 1983, sorry. Anyway, it's loaded now. It's now generating the maze for us. It takes a little bit of time. And then we can start the action. So it starts off showing us the map of the maze. X is representing walls and space is representing, well, passageways. And we are the star in the bottom left. So. Where is the lodestar? So facing us is we're facing east, in front of us is east, and the lodestar is 12, 12 away. So moving east now, moving forwards, down the corridor, walls to our left and our right. There's a we can go straight ahead or go north, and we're still going east, and we've hit a dead end. So one of the things I got very confused by is five, six, seven, eight moves you in the direction of the arrows. That is absolutely correct. 
If you press 7, which is up, you will go straight forward. If you press 5, you will not only turn left, but will also move left as well. So pressing 5 will make you move in a big circle, not just spin on the spot. Press 6, you step backwards and then spin around. So facing us now is a wall, you can go left or right or backwards. The load set indicator originally is meant to be 100 times the x distance plus the y distance. Unfortunately, one of them could be negative, which I've corrected, and we're stuck in the ward of bod mass. So it multiplies the first by 100 and then takes the second. So we're 80, 47 away. So we can see here, we can go north, south and east, but to the west of the wall, we're facing south. So moving around the maze, now we've turned, we're now facing west, straight into a wall, because you don't just turn, you also move, which gets a bit tricky and a bit weird, and I really, really don't like it. I can see what they were trying to do, because normally you turn, then you move, well, why not combine the two, because it's just confusing. Um, so we can go east or west here, so I'm heading west, along a corridor, nice long corridor. Can I go south? Those are still quite a way away. So, facing east now, those are far, far away, and you can only see one space in front of you. So moving along this long corridor, and hit into a, into a corner, so now facing south, I can go north, south or east. Where should we go next? Now facing east, Oh, facing north now, we're, spinning, we're moving and spinning, load source getting a little bit closer, facing north, let's move north. Load source 3027. And then looking west. Let's move west a little bit. Low star is yeah, in the 3000s. Let's go north. 2000s. Ooh. So now I can go east, looks like. I'm spinning east. I'm very close. Ooh. 1027. 2027. I'm still very close. I'm still very close. It prints very close if you're within three. So I'm very close. That was 1027. Um, can I get closer? Let's try and get a bit closer. That's 1037. That's further away. 1047. 24. So I'm going a lot further away now. This is not so good. So let's go try and move around the maze. I've got to be 30, 47, I'm getting further away. Let's go east now. East, 30, 27, into a wall. Let's look at the map. Okay, so I'm where the star is. The um, the yellow blob, I should say. And you can see where I've been. I've been in the top in the top corner, so maybe I need to go south and around. So let's go south, and let's now go east, around the corner, so we're getting very close, 501, 500, let's go north now, 400, oh, a wall, uh, let's look at the map, and that's I am, I don't think I can get any closer, hmm, um, let's go around again maybe. Let's go south. I'm getting further away. So back north. Round we go. 400 water into a wall. Let's go south. 500. Let's go west. 501. Getting further away. Let's go west again. 502. Let's go north. North into a wall. 302. West is open. Let's go west. 303. Let's go. We can go north, 204, 104, getting very close. Can I go east maybe? Yes, 103, east again, 102. Can I go north? Look, 202, 102, very close. 101, uh, that's a wall.
back into the program, let's see where we're meant to go. So I'm going to print out the x and y coordinates of both me and where I need to be. I need to be in 14, and I'm currently 13. I need to be in 14, currently 13. There are walls in between me and where I need to be, and where I need to be is a wall anyway. This is not good. I've now fixed the program. There are two problems. The maze is... The, the spe it, it fills in a maze with walls to start with. There's a 10% there's a chance it will replace a wall with the space. And then it's supposed to fill in the pathway with a fixed number of spaces. Two problems. One is there's a read statement, a, a false statement on line 690 for one i equals f equals 1 to 67. It should be 68. So it misses out the, the line that says make 14, 14 a space. There's a 1 in 3 chance that the load star is in 14, 14. That was the problem we had there. The other problem is, it's meant to make sure the space next to it, 1314, is a space. In fact, it reads 134. I've fixed both of those. I've also fixed the load star indicator, so it now gets the absolute distance between x and y, and then times it by 100. So now it's here, I'm going east, into a wall now. I'm 11 spaces away, 10 spaces away, facing north. Move north. Now facing east, it's the turning and moving, I really don't like it. So now facing east, seven spaces away, let's go west. I can now go west into a wall, or south, or east. Let's go east again. Oh, now I've got a nice big corridor. Up to go north. You can only see one space, I can't go north anymore. I can go west. Getting further away. Yep, but now I go north again. So getting closer. So I can keep going north, I can now go east. 400, very close, 300, I can go east or I can go north, can go east again, oh, it's dead end, keep going east. And you've done it, and there's no sound. Who did it best, Britain or Italy? Well, let's, take, let's be professional about this and do it on various criteria. So, starting off. Year of publication. The older, the better. It's no good comparing a game written in, say, 1981 with one written last year with all the knowledge and skills you've gained and say, well, that's obviously much better. It's not fair. So, the British game was published in 1983. The Italian was published in 1984, March 84, even though the copyright year says 83. So, on a technicality, I'll give that one to Britain. Size of bytes. Again, we try to be fair, it's no good comparing a 48k program with a 16k program. Even within that, the smaller the program is, the more the more think kudos you get. So let's compare the sizes. The British program on the tape was 7394 bytes. The Italian program was 6975, so it was actually a lot smaller. How big was the maze? Moving around the maze, the bigger the maze, the better, I think. Because you could have a maze of one by one, but that would be rather silly. So how big are the mazes? The British maze was 15 by 15. The Italian maze was 22 by 32. So considerably bigger. It is doing well. So graphics quality. Uh, what, sort, what are the graphics like? The British game had low-res graphics, the only using the Spectrum graphics characters. The Italian game had high-res graphics using the draw and plot capabilities, plus also two user-defined graphics. So that one goes to the Italians. Next, graphic size in pixels. How much of the screen is taken up with the graphics? The British game is four rows and six, six columns, whereas the Italian game is the full screen. The Italians also use the bottom two lines using the input field. Very clever. Speed of gameplay. So how do these compare? Well, the British game is actually very fast. The author noted they, he, they were concerned that it would be a bit slow to play, but it redrew the screen very fast. The Italian one was fine, but there was a noticeable delay while it redrew the screen. So that one goes to the British. Control. How well do the games control? I found the British control method of forward, left and turn, right and turn, back and turn, weird. 
I could see what they were going for. If you're going to turn, you're going to want to move eventually. I just found it really confusing. If they kept it so it was normal, that would be fine. Or even the keys were compass directions, that's fine. But they kept changing, and I just find that confusing. So that one goes to the Italians, which is the nice standard left, right, forward, and turn around. Sense of progress. When you're playing the game, how does it change? How do you know that you're winning? Well, the British had this lodestar distance measure, which you can see counting down as you got closer, and I actually really rather liked that. That was a big thing. The Italian game had none of that unless you looked at the map, which cost you two minutes of time. When I was doing the trail your hand along the, on, along the left hand side of the wall, I got a bit downhearted after 13 minutes. Uh, because I couldn't see any, any difference. So that goes to Britain. Ease of typing it in. So I typed in the British game from a book using my proper keyboard on my PC in an emulator. The Italian game I typed in on my laptop in a web browser uh, from a PDF in another tab of the uh, browser, which wasn't ideal. I, I even said that. The British game was tricky to type in. It had some strange characters, well not strange, it had use of the graphics characters, including full bars, half bars and three quarter bars, three quarter blocks. That was tricky to type in. The Italian game either had spaces or full blocks, and lining them up wasn't, wasn't too bad. The only issue I had was I got the characters wrong sometimes and changed ink colour, which caused me some problems in debugging, but that was nothing to do with the actual programme. The British game, you had to line up four print statements in one line using colons and spaces, and that was not easy. That goes to Italy. As written, were the, was the programme error free? The Italian one, yes it was. I made some errors typing it in, but once I checked the listing, it turned out it was my fault, not the game's. The British programme, not so much. The Lodestar thing, you could argue it wasn't necessarily a problem but I found it a bit weird it started at being negative 1200 or something until I started playing with it the fact that there's a one-third chance that the lodestar could be in the top right hand corner and then is completely unreachable that's a negative mark against the British program so that goes to Italy let's scroll were there sounds any sounds in the game while well, the British game was completely silent the Italians had a nice victory tune, introductory tune, and a little chirp whenever we did anything. And that was rather nice. I did like that. That goes to Italy. Did the game provide instructions? Well, the British game, the instructions are inside the book. The Italian game had instructions once you loaded it. In Italian, but it's still reasonable to know what was going on. So that goes to Italy. And that's even with a smaller programme, by the way. So... Who do you think won? Yeah, I think it was fairly clear that the Italian programme was just better. No disrespect to the person that wrote 3D Maze. I'm sure they did their best. But the Italian game is just really rather impressive. So, for further viewing, I'm going to link you to 3D Monster Maze on the ZX81. If you're a Commodore 64 user, a very nice man called Davide Bucce has been inspired by this programme and has written a 3D Maze, which looks very cool and also has music. You can check it out on his blog and i put a link in the description below. I'll be certainly going back to MC Computing, there's some very interesting programs in there and it seems to be an excellent magazine. Thank you for watching.